What's going on, everybody? It is April 4th, a.k.a. Wednesday, a.k.a. the day that Liverpool takes a commanding lead against Man City in the Champions League quarterfinals. If you don't agree with that, um, you know, I don't uh, I don't like you as much as I did before I said it. Um, not the best slate in the world, but there is a bunch of value to be found right now. Uh, six games. Better than um, 13 or whatever nonsense we had yesterday. So I'm just going to dive in. Uh, first game up on the slate, Pistons and Sixers. Uh, Pistons with a 106.75 implied total. That is fifth on the day. They are one and a half point underdogs at home uh, against the Sixers. We're starting off with... The Pistons really not play since Sunday? That's not right, right? Why is that not showing up? Or maybe I'm right. Where's the first Drummond? Yeah, that's just right. Fair enough. Off to a great start so far, everybody. Uh, you know, it goes without saying, Pistons have a difficult matchup. Sixers are great on D. Uh, we've got Drummond at 10K on FanDuel. 10-3 uh, on DK. Um... I'm fine with it. Uh, it's obviously a very different matchup for Drummond with Embiid out. Only went for 30 fantasy points in 25 minutes on uh, on Easter Sunday. <clears throat> so I could see a bounce back here um, from Drummond. I could see him wanting to win here more so than normal. Uh, I don't have any problems rostering uh, Andre Drummond. I'd be willing to take a look at Stanley Johnson, Reggie Bullock, and Reggie Jackson. I think all of them have interesting sort of GPP looks to them. Stanley Johnson, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,600 on DK, went for 38 uh, on Sunday. Uh, a couple games in the mid-20s previous to that. So I think Stanley Johnson could be worth a flyer in a GPP. Um, similar scenario for Reggie Bullock. 4,500 on, <clears throat> sorry, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK, uh, you know, went for 30 on March 31st, had a 28-point game at, uh, in this stretch as well. I think Bullock looks like a nice flyer. And then Reggie Jackson, um, now that he's getting a, a bigger allotment of minutes, well, he's at 5,800, and that's not the best salary in the world. Uh, went for 36 his last time out, went for 30 uh, the game before that, uh, both of which you'd be okay with, so... I think they're worth a look, but Drummond would be the only guy that I would want to have with any sort of volume on the Pistons. Sixers, uh, 108.25 implied total, second on the entire slate, and uh, they've got a very nice matchup, particularly at center. It's a shame that uh, Embiid can't take advantage. Um, ben Simmons at 9,700 on FanDuel, 10-2 on DK. As per usual, I'll, I'll likely have a very minimal amount of Ben Simmons. I just don't love the price for him. Uh, only played 25 minutes um, last night. So, you know, he should be relatively fresh today. But I don't see I don't see him going absolutely crazy. This doesn't strike me as the type of matchup where he would do that either. Um, you know, they've got some wing defense on Detroit that I think can, can stay with Simmons. Now, Ilyasova, 5,000 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK. Uh, Ilyasova looks great on FanDuel. Getting extra minutes now um, with Embiid out. I'm going to have a, a very nice amount of Ursan Ilyasova tonight. At that price on FanDuel, 5,000, uh, it's hard to not want to take a look at him. 25 is an easy threshold to hit. Hit 30 last night, went for 47 uh, a couple nights ago. You know, had a 30-point game on March 26th. Uh, plenty of upside for Ilyasova. Uh, Covington, you know, it's uh, he went for 42 last night, 54 on Easter Sunday. Um, he's on a little bit of a heater right now. Price looks pretty good on FanDuel. I'd, I'd be willing to take some flyers on Covington. Uh, but the guy that I'd like the most tonight would probably be Rashawn Holmes. Uh, 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. And when I say the most, I mean aside from Ilyasova. Uh, Holmes got the lion's share of the minutes last night at center, 27. Amir Johnson played the other 21. 
Uh, I've got Holmes and Johnson splitting the minutes here tonight, but I would prefer to grab Holmes at 4,200. I think he's got a better chance to fill out the stat sheet. Um, no interest really in Markel Fultz. Uh, 4,100 It's just not going to get enough minutes in my opinion. Um, my biggest focus is going to be Ilyasova and Holmes. I think that's a great spot to grab some value on a slate like tonight. Magic hosting the Mavs. This one's brutal. Uh, Magic 101 implied total is ninth. They are three and a half point favorites at home um, against the Mavs. Uh, no Barnes for the Mavs. Obviously no Wes Matthews, no Dirk, no Dwight Powell, no Dennis Smith. Uh, it's a shit show over there in Dallas. Uh, for the Magic, still no Jonathan Simmons. Um, we're not going to see any Jonathan Isaac tonight already ruled out. So it's a it's it's just not a good team. Um, Hazonia, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Uh, went for 32.7 last night. I think... Rostering a little bit of Hazonia is perfectly fine in a matchup like this where Dallas is playing the B team. Um, Aaron Gordon, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Uh, doesn't grade out the best, but uh, Orlando with the fourth best matchup against power forwards, I think Gordon deserves a little bit of a boost there. Uh, he's someone that I'll look at on in this six-game slate. And other than that, I mean, I think Shelvin Mack comes into play. Played 28 minutes last night, went for 33.5 fantasy points. Uh, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,300 on DK. Um, I think using Mack as a, as a punt is, is a decent look. I would get away from DJ Augustin at this point. Um, nothing to do backflips over. Uh, Mack, Hazonia, and Gordon are really the only guys that I'm looking at. Uh, I don't really have a lot of interest in Artis or uh, Rodney Purvis. Now, for the Mavs, uh, buckle up. 97.5 implied total is dead last. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the matchup is sort of indifferent. Uh, we're running out a bunch of guys that probably should be playing real basketball. Uh, so Maxi, 3,700 on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. Should play 30 minutes. You have to be looking at him as a value play on DraftKings or FanDuel. Uh, I feel a similar way for Yogi Ferrell, particularly on FanDuel where he's 4,300. Uh, he's just going to get a ton of minutes, so you have to look at him. Not as much in play on DK at 5,100. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, um, not somebody I'm going to have a ton of, but you know worth a, a look-see, I guess, but lo low usage guy, doesn't really score a ton, he's more of a defense person, so he'll be the guy I have the least of, and almost none of, uh, on FanDuel. Berea, 5,200 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK, uh, should get as many minutes as he can really handle, um, looks like a great option at that price, I'll have an overwhelming amount of Berea, um, Sala Mejri um, should see some time at 3,200 on DK. He's an absolutely amazing flyer uh, just because they're so short on minutes. Um, you know, no Noel with the suspension, no Dirk, so no Dwight Powell. Uh, so Mejri's going to have to grab some minutes out there, which at 3,200 on DK is a nice look. Uh, for me, it's, it's Maxi, it's Yogi. Uh, and it's Berea as my major priorities on FanDuel with a little bit of solid measure. I don't love the $4,500 price point on FanDuel. Uh, so the other three guys are my main looks. Um, lots, to, lots to like there for Dallas. Um, if they were playing anybody with a pulse, I wouldn't feel the same way. But since it's the Magic, I feel pretty comfortable grabbing these uh, crappy guys. Uh, Raptors. Hosting the Celtics, 106.75 implied total um, for the Drakes. Uh, six and a half? Nope, seven and a half point favorites at home. Uh, they're tied for fifth for implied total. We've got um, not the best matchup. You know, Celtics are obviously pretty solid on D, although they are pretty dinged up. DeRozan at 7,900, uh, 7,800 on DK. Um, he's not someone I'm going to go crazy for, but I'll have a little bit of 
Lowry shit the bed last night uh, against the Cavs. 15 fantasy points in 29 minutes. Just a really bad look. Um, Calderon went bananas last night. So uh, didn't expect that sort of overshining. Uh, if I had to pick between the two, I would I would lean towards DeRozan. Um, but I leaned towards Lowry yesterday and see where that got you. Sorry. Um, 8,100 on FanDuel for Lowry, 7,900 on DK. If he's trying to, you know, bounce back from that, he, you know, he might push a little harder. But Raptors want these games regardless. Um, so I would lean DeRozan. Don't really love either of the prices on either guy, especially the mat- with this matchup. Um, honestly, I don't see a ton that I really want to entertain. Uh, Pascal Siakam is worth a GPP flyer on DK. 3700 is an interesting price for a guy um, that could see minutes in certain situations. Uh, very much just a flyer, though. I don't really like any part of the Raptors tonight. It's not a not a place I'm going to focus. For the Celtics, uh, 99.25 implied total is 10th. 7.5-point uh, underdogs in Toronto. And um, expecting to see Rozier play tonight. Um, 7,300 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. Doesn't really make me, you know, super excited either way. Um, it's a decent matchup for point guards, oddly enough. So I will take a small look at Rozier. Uh, but for me, like, I just don't really care all that much about any of the Celtics. I don't really like running head into the Raptors. Um, so like a little bit of Rozier, maybe a little tiny bit of Al Horford, but I don't really want any part of Brown or Tatum or Morris. And, uh, unfortunately Greg Monroe just doesn't play enough minutes. Um, he could look a little bit interesting since the Raptors always usually have some sort of traditional big on the floor. Uh, so I think Monroe could be worth a flyer if his price was a little bit better, but right here, I couldn't imagine having him in more than like one or two of my 150. To the Hawks, uh, the Hawks with a 98.75 implied total, uh, eight point underdogs at home against the Heat. Um, 11th highest implied total for the Hawks. If you were lucky enough to be on Damian Lee yesterday, you picked up 41 fantasy points at a pretty tasty price. Um, not a great matchup here outside of shooting guard. I'll likely have a little bit of Lee again. Um, but I would expect him to be slightly higher owned as a as a chaser play um, from last night's performance. So I'll try to be realistic about it tonight. I had like probably three times the field of Damian Lee, which was very helpful. Um, I don't really want any Isaiah Taylor at six thousand. Uh, you can get there for me at fifty two hundred on DK. Damian Lee would be my you know quote unquote favorite play here. Uh, keep an eye on Dwayne Dedman. He was a very late scratch last night. Um, if we get any news early, you know, that might open up some plays on, for like, you know, somebody like Miles Plumley who got 34 minutes last night, um, or John Collins to get in uh, like additional time. Um, but I'm not really wild about Dedman in general. I'd have a little bit of Collins. I think that's fine. Um, Torian Prince, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. You know, my numbers hate him. Um, not a re- not really a guy for me. Uh, my main focus would probably be just be Damian Lee, and even that should be a little muted. Um, but he's been getting the run, so. And 41.8 fantasy points last night. Back-to-back 30 fantasy point games to close out March. You know, he's been playing pretty well. Miami, 106.75 implied total is 8th. Nope, it's fifth. They're eight-point favorites, though. You know, numbers are confusing, guys. It's it's good that I don't do anything that is strictly numbers-based 24-7. Good God. Hold on, let me get a slurp in. This is a round two of coffee. For some reason, it smells like booze, but there's no booze in it. Although, depending on how this Liverpool games, there might, game goes, there might be uh, some booze in it sooner rather than later. Uh, nice matchup for Miami. Obviously, Hawks no great shakes on D. Really good at point guard, small forward, and center tonight. Uh, I'm more than okay having a little bit of Drogic. 6,600 on FanDuel is kind of crazy. 
He put up 44 and a half last night. So, uh, you know, give me some Drogic again on FanDuel. Less enthused on DK. Um, Josh Richardson at 6,200. Uh, I'm willing to take that shot against Atlanta. Uh, Miami with the best matchup against small forwards. So sign me up for some, some Jay Rich. New Jay Rich. Uh, James Johnson looks okay. Tyler Johnson looks okay. Uh, White side, you know, went for 40 last night. You need every bit of that 40, though. He looks a little bit better on DK. Um, but, you know, there's no telling what Whiteside's minutes are going to look like on a day-to-day basis. And I don't expect him to get, you know, a ton of run against the Hawks team if this game gets out of hand. So I'd focus more on Drogic, Tyler Johnson, Josh Richardson, um, but really, anybody in that top five that's on the sheet right now is uh, is fine by me. Not a lot to worry about against the Hawks. Pelicans. 114.25 implied total. Number one on the slate by six full points. They are 13-point favorites at home hosting the Grizzlies. Um... Grizzlies are just a shit show. Uh, Pelicans desperately need this game. Let's let's check out the 538 odds as we normally do, just to get an idea of how important some of this stuff is to teams. Pelicans right now, 58% chance to make the playoffs. They are projected to be the 8th seed right now at 538 and finish a game ahead of the Nuggets. Um, So they are in no position to drop a gimme like this. Um, Pelicans are going to do whatever it takes to win this game. Um, They shouldn't have to do a lot to win this game, but this is one that they cannot afford to drop. AD at 12-3, 11-8 on DraftKings. Um, I I like AD a lot here. Uh, He should want to just ether the Grizzlies and they don't have anything that they can do to stop him um like Marc Gasol can't hang with him Jermichael Green is out uh I, I really like AD and I think that with the amount of value that's out there particularly on you know the Mavs I think that you can get to AD pretty easily and uh, that's something that I'll probably be doing um Drew Holiday 8800 on FanDuel 8100 on DK I don't love paying all the way up for Drew. It's a nice matchup. Um, you know, second best matchup for shooting guards, which is obviously Drew's role for the most part. Uh, but 88's a lot. I don't see a ton of upside in that price on FanDuel, so I'll be relatively muted on Drew. Um, I think that Eton Moore is a, is a reasonable flyer to take in a GPP. Um, I think that Rondo is a reasonable flyer to take in a GPP. Uh, but AD is the big priority for me. I, I want to have a bunch of him since there's enough value out there to get there. Grizzlies. I don't even really know how to talk about this team. Um, they do have an exceptional matchup. Uh, the Pelicans aren't really the best from a defensive standpoint. Uh, it's a big-time pace-up game, an implied total game for the Grizzlies. But... Uh, it, it's hard to even care, to be perfectly honest. Like, I don't really want any part of Dylan Brooks. You know, if you want to take a flyer on Ben McLemore, 3,800 on FanDuel, 3,300 on DK, that's fine. Don't be, you know, be prepared to get Ben McLemore if it happens, but it's some value. Uh, Jarrell Martin is going to do Jarrell Martin-y things. 4,100 on FanDuel. Like, you have to look at him, but he's bad. Marquise Teague isn't even on FanDuel. Uh, You can think about him at DK. I wouldn't think too hard. Uh, If I was going to look at anybody, it'd probably be Marshawn Brooks if he's going to play tonight. Um, I've got him in for 26 minutes, and at those salaries, you know, it's worth a look. Uh, I don't really want any part of Marc Gasol, who's playing less minutes now. Um, I would try to focus most on Jarrell Martin. And then I would play it by ear until we know who the Grizzlies starters are going to be to sort of readjust and see if there's any additional value. But 101.25 implied total, tied for seventh. Uh, This is just not a great game. Um, 
to be confident about. There's no telling who's going to get minutes. I mean, they've played 17 different guys in the past two weeks, which is really hard to pull off <laughs> with roster constraints. So I think Jarrell Martin is the safest bet out of anybody on the board for the Grizzlies just because he's going to be the most steady from a minute standpoint. And dude has no problem shooting shots that he should not be shooting. So take a look there. But you're going to want to get news on the Grizzlies starters, which we might not have by 930. Uh, so, you know, kind of buyer beware. Final game of the night. Uh, Lakers hosting the Spurs. 101.25 implied total for the Lakers. Tied for seventh with the Grizzlies. They're six-point underdogs at home against San Antonio. Uh, I'm expecting Brandon Ingram to play at a sort of lesser minutes amount than you know he had been normally getting. Uh, I don't see a ton of value out there for the Lakers. I think that you can take a look at KCP, Kuzma, and Randall, and I think you'll be okay. Um, Josh Hart on FanDuel is worth a flyer. Uh, you can't touch him at 5,600 on DK. Uh, but mostly for me, it's KCP, Kuzma, and Randall. I'm not really wild about any of that. Uh, it's just not a great spot against the Spurs. Um, but the prices are okay, particularly Kuzma, who should you know, be able to take whatever shots he wants at least. But with the season winding down, I'm just... I don't want to force the Lakers at this point any longer. And I don't really see the value out there in doing it. Spurs, though, I think have some interesting options. Aldridge at 9,100, 9,300 on DK. Went for uh, 62 fantasy points last night. Came off of 50 on uh, Easter Sunday. No reason to think that he can't have another nice night tonight. 9,100 is a big-time price point, but uh, I'm fine with running out Aldridge. Um... I'm not wild about Patty Mills on FanDuel. I'd, I'd like it a little bit more on DK. Um, I like Rudy Gay. Put up 34 fantasy points last night in 18 minutes. 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK. I think he's worth a look in GPPs. Um, you know, I don't, I don't love Murray, but I think that he's going to get talked about a little bit tonight just because of the lack of sort of point guard stuff going on for LA uh, but Aldridge and Rudy Gay are my two favorite things coming out of San Antonio both for very different reasons um, I'd be okay with any sort of little trickle of Mills Danny Green Murray or Anderson but they're not guys that I'm prioritizing Ooh. Oh, chair release itself so does that do that all the time I see that I'm like faded to black a little bit the stupid webcam just changes its settings while I'm in it. I'll bump that up, bump that, and save. Now everything's crystal clear again. Weird. Okay, let's uh, let's toss these lineups or let's toss these projections into uh, Fantasy Cruncher, and we'll see what we get. Start with a um, little bit of FanDuel. Got bailed out a little bit last night. I don't think my player pool is the best. If you saw the live stream, you probably saw me be a little too heavy on Joe Harris. Uh, but ultimately, I was able to hit a top 10 in the in the $4 uh, FanDuel tourney. So that was able to pay my freight most of the way. So I got a little bailed out there. Let's bump up the randomness. Let's see what we get. It's so much, guys, that suck. It's kind of scary. Okay, so let's grab Berea to start. I want to grab AD to start. I'll go with Damian Lee. Um, anybody else that I should absolutely have? Grab Aldridge. I think the safest bet there would be Dragic. 
So that leaves me five lines. Man, you can go in so many different directions. Let's grab Hazonia. What do these two look like? I'm not going to do backflips over the idea of having DeRozan, but I think this second line, Dragic, Berea, DeRozan, Damian Lee, Hazonia, Marshawn Brooks, AD, Aldridge, and Holmes is, is a really nice GPP lineup. Um, let's see what we've got on DK. If you haven't already, uh, go check out the MLB video myself and Jake Hari posted uh, earlier today looking at the main slate um, for baseball tonight. Uh, spoiler alert, I like John Gray a lot. Hope I didn't ruin it for you. You should still watch it anyway. It's captivating stuff. And I mean that sincerely. Uh, Jake is bringing crazy amounts of information um, to the show way more than I have. Uh, he's really digging deep, and uh, it's nice to have him opposite of me. It's good to uh, have somebody to talk to that's, that's obviously very knowledgeable about baseball. Um, I didn't add any randomness, did I? That's going very slowly. Okay, let's do this. There we go. Now the numbers are growing. Almost there. There we go. So I'm starting with AD because I love him. Uh, let's grab Berea. Let's grab Mejri at 3,200. I don't see really a direction to go otherwise. Uh, I think I got to grab Ben McLemore as well, which then allows me to grab... What's Drummond's price? 10-3. What's Aldridge? 93 Hmm. I'll make that decision in a different direction. What's Ilyasova's price? He's only in one lineup, so we'll see if it ends up there. Hmm. Who stands out on DK? Berea, Brooks, Mejri, Maxi. Oh, all these fucking Dallas guys. <laughs> Drummond or Aldridge? Drummond or Aldridge? I'm going to grab Drummond. Just because I have the money. Can I grab them both? Nope. Um, what's the Ilias Ova line look like? Eh, it's with Brooks and Murray. I'll walk that back. How about Aaron Gordon? What does that line look like? Eh, I'll walk that one back too. That one scares me quite a bit. Everything's going to be really relying on Marshawn Brooks, where I likely have him over project. Is, is that real? Did I read that correctly? That's got to be some sort of typo. Fantasy, there's no way Fantasy Country has Marshawn Brooks projected for 46 fantasy points. That's ludicrous. Um, I mean, I like something like this. Berea, Brooks, McLemore, Maxi, Drummond, Drew, AD, Mejri. Like, if I locked Mejri, AD, Drummond... Maxi and Berea and squashed Brooks. What do I get in my top 20? Like if I grab, let's grab Damian Lee. Like I like that a lot better with Berea, Lee, Kuzma, Maxi. Drummond, McLemore, AD, and Mejri. It's too much Dallas. Like, I w probably wouldn't go Mejri and Maxi, but at 7,000 combined, like, there's just so many minutes on the table for those guys that I think it's worth a look. It's just hard to get away from Dallas tonight. 
Anyway, that's it, guys. Quick look at the six games tonight. Uh, if you have any questions for me, feel free to hit me up in the comments here or follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Um, look for Osimo's rankings at Osimo.com. Um, throughout the day, we'll have FanDuel and DraftKings rankings. Uh, we'll have the Slam Dunks posted as well if you're looking for baseball content we'll have rankings hitter stacks or yeah hitter stacks a hitter's spotlight pitcher spotlight if you're looking for hockey jake's got a ton of hockey content out we're really starting to fill it in guys so uh get there and check out everything that we're doing uh it's really good stuff in my opinion you're getting it straight from from awesome mouth or fingertips i guess to your eyes no, no longer mouth to ears. Um, yeah, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, growing out this YouTube channel is gigantic for us. Um, we're really trying to, to make it grow as quick as we can. Uh, if you saw, we had a live stream last night um, for the hour before lock. Myself and um, author of The Switch and Hedge, Chris Spaggs, will be on live again tonight. Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 o'clock, we'll be looking at NBA and baseball questions, so you know, feel free to come, join in, ask some questions. It's just going to be a fun hang. Uh, we'll we'll talk fantasy sports. We'll probably get off track a little bit. Um, there's a lot going on, but uh, it's a fun show. We were, we did about an hour and 15 minutes last night. Love to have you guys join. So come check that out. You can find that link. Uh, it'll be tweeted out right when the show goes live. If you subscribe, you can get that alert. Uh, but otherwise, if you just come to the Awesome Mo uh, YouTube channel, you'll see a link for the live stream as soon as you get there. So that's everything from me. Uh, I love you guys. Best of luck tonight. And uh, I'll see you in a couple hours for the live stream. Bye-bye.